Hey, hey, long time no see. Well, actually, I have seen you guys, but I mean, I just haven't made a tutorial. Mostly because I'm lazy. But anyway, the point is that this video is proudly sponsored by Winkbox. Winkbox is a website showcasing tons of courses made by professionals, and this is one that's caught my eye. This course here is presented by Park jun Kyu, who's a character concept artist and illustrator from Korea. He's really good at what he does, and he'll show you exactly how to do it too. What you can benefit most from the course is you can expect how to learn how to draw sophisticated cyberpunk concept art, and you'll learn how to draw more pictures in a short amount of time. Which is really useful even if you aren't a cyberpunk fan, then this will teach you other aspects of art as well. This is good for people who are interested in cyberpunk art and bored with ordinary character art, or anyone who wants to draw fast and nice pictures in a short amount of time. And don't you worry, you don't need to be a professional in order to do this because he teaches you everything all the way from step one. Okay, take 10, because I already recorded this several times, but I wasn't satisfied. So, make a new layer. You can copy my butt buttocks. <laughs> you can copy my bucket settings. And then just go in with the bucket tool and just drop it onto the hair. We're doing this all so that we can... You know what? I'm starting to get a little less clear when I speak, I noticed. So just select everything, and then we're going to get our perfect brush normal, or you can get dip pen hard if you want. You can find all the brushes that I use inside my brushes that I use video, which you can find on my channel, or you can find in my playlist. So here we're just adding some more... We're just thinning out the lines a little bit more and cleaning things up. This isn't exactly a necessary step. Of course you could do your own line art, but when I do gotcha edits, I usually tend to not do line art or sketch over it because I want to take as much advantage as I can of the using the ready-made gotcha base, which would save me a lot of time. But you know what? If you already have line art that's made, then you can just completely skip this step. But if you're not a fan of line art and you can't do line art like me, I can't do line art, actually, I really, really, I'm really bad at it. So then you could just do those steps. Making a new layer, getting a multiply layer, and getting a, a nice, cool, toned color. It can be in the purples or blues. Also, these are my stabilizer settings. You can copy mine or you can make your own, but anyway, those are mine. So with our perfect soft brush, or dip pen hard, whatever you you use. I'm now using... you can see that the lines were already kind of made, but I'm just making everything a little longer because I want to add a little more detail. Doing all this, it if you don't know how to really make more detail with your hair and how to define each lock and how to make a lock of hair, then that's completely fine. This is something that would take, like, judgment, because I wasn't able to do this even a couple months back, and I really struggled with it, so the way I improved was by looking at references. References are not cheating, and they are actually going to help you a lot. You're going to build up your visual library, and they're going to just... It's going to help you a lot, okay? So if you don't understand how hair connects all to, like, one part of the head, or you don't understand, like, how layering of the hair works, or you just don't understand hair in general, then look at references, watch tutorials, or just really look at references, mostly simplified references. Looking at simplified references is really good instead of looking at realistic photos, though it's still important to look at realistic pictures. Anyway, now we're going to add a lot of detail, making a new layer, setting it to multiply, and getting our perfect soft brush. My throat hurts, not for any particular reason, aside from the fact that I'm dumb and I don't drink water when I should. So also put on gap detection, gap recognition, and now you can shade your locks of hair without any messes. This saves a lot of time instead of cleaning up later. So yeah, this is just something that I discovered recently and I want to share it, sh share it with everyone. Some good tea. That's some really good tea. Alright, 
so as you can see, I'm also going in here and darkening the shadows a little bit. But the main thing for all this is to add two lines of shadows on each lock of hair. One from the beginning of the lock of hair and one from the ending of the lock of hair. Then, if you're not satisfied with your colors and you tend to be a bit obsessive like me, then you could always just go over to your filters and you could just adjust the settings. Making a new layer, setting it to multiply, using our perfect brush. We're now using an even darker color and going in to define everything. This is honestly my favorite part since it's really just following along the lines of the hair to try to make everything pop out a little more. Here we're adding values. Values is like the light and dark. You can see our hair is, it has like a lot of light things, so I'm putting in darker shadows. And you need to pay attention to your values if you want your art to pop out more. So focusing on each lock of hair, I said this many times in my other previous tutorials. But you need to focus on each lock of hair. Everything seems really like big and confusing and hard. But seriously though, if you focus on each lock of hair, it'll be so much easier. Also, make sure that you clip everything to the base color, except for this new layer, which you'll be using the perfect Yeah, you know what? I really shouldn't have made this tutorial. My throat hurts, but I gotta get this out there. So with the same stabilizer settings that I showed you before, you'll be using the perfect brush and you'll have your settings on normal. The layer will be normal and no clipping. Also, I just feared that I was just covering up the sound the entire time because of the way I'm holding my phone, since I still don't have a microphone and I'm just using my phone to record this. So select different colors in your hair so you could get different strands. Also, when doing your strands of hair, try to follow the form of the original lock, meaning that if you can see how that arched out a bit, now we're going to follow that with the strands of hair. This part isn't really necessary, but I really like it. We're going to make a new layer, put it on color dodge, using a red color. I'd really recommend to use red, and with an airbrush. This, obviously, I learned from Ross Draws. I mean, yeah, of course, obviously. So just tap it in the middle of his hair, and it'll give it that nice, pretty glow effect. Okay? I'm sorry for putting tutorials off for so long. My motivation died, and honestly, I don't know. I just couldn't really find a way to make any good drawings because I've hit a big art block, but then my inspiration, not my inspiration, my motivation, I don't have inspiration right now, I'm just, I'm inspirationalist. Is that even a word? Anyway, the point is, <laughs> thank you so much for the support. Have a good night, day, or wherever you are, and please check out the link in the description for Wing Fox. You'll learn plenty from the tutorial, and even if that tutorial is not your style, then there's plenty others that could be your style. Made by professionals that go into every detail and show you every single thing that you would ever want to know about that specific subject that they are teaching. Okay, so anyway, I'm gonna go back into my hole and make more videos. <laughs> Alright, so have a good night, day, wherever you are. Take care, everyone, and see you next time.